Today we'll be maintaining an externally routed PNW Components dropper post. The necessary tools and materials you'll need are a 2mm Allen wrench, a 2.5mm Allen wrench, an adjustable wrench, a 5 16th wrench, needle nose pliers, lubricant of your choice such as a high viscosity grease like Slick Honey, rubbing alcohol, and lastly a rag that's preferably microfiber. To remove the dropper from your frame, start by disconnecting the cable at the lever. Remove the dust cover at the mid cap where the cable enters the post. With the cable end loose at the lever, pull the housing down slightly so that slack develops in the cable and you can pop the cable end out of the cable carrier at the mid cap. Loosen the saddle clamp with a 5mm Allen wrench or the appropriate size tool. Then pull the dropper post out of the frame. If your saddle is still connected, remove it using a 5mm Allen wrench. If you have an adjustable air cartridge post, relieve the dropper of any pressure using a shock pump. Use the adjustable wrench to remove the lower cap of the post. Hold the dropper in one hand while turning the lower cap counterclockwise with the wrench in your other hand. Once broken free, unthread the lower cap. Use the wrench to loosen the lock nut and pull the nylon cable through the hole in the bolt. To remove the mid cap, look for a 2.5 mm Allen either on the back side of the mid cap or under the cable carrier where the cable was installed. Use a 2.5 mm Allen to remove the set screw and set this aside for safekeeping. With the set screw removed, slide the entire mid cap assembly up the stanchion towards the head of the post. Next, slide the lower post body towards the head of the post to reveal the actuator and lower cartridge shaft. Use a 2mm Allen to remove the lower assembly through bolt and set aside. Remove the lower assembly and bottom out bumpers and set aside. Pull the upper and lower portion of the dropper post apart. If the actuator rod falls out of the dropper post, it can be replaced at any time before re-securing the nylon cord. When replacing the actuator rod, be sure that the flat end of the rod is placed inside the dropper, leaving the rounded end exposed. Remove the upper roller pin and set it aside for safekeeping. Now apply some rubbing alcohol to your rag and clean the dropper's stanchion, brass keys, machine grooves, and the inside of the lower tubing. Apply a thin layer of grease to the brass keys and the machine grooves on the inside of the lower tubing. To reassemble, run the nylon cord vertically along the dropper post stanchion and slide it between the two brass keys. Next wrap the nylon cord between the lower shaft to help guide it through the post body. Make sure the nylon cord runs through the grooves of both plastic spacers. But be careful, nylon cords are easily damaged so if you feel that the post is jamming when you're sliding it apart, make sure to stop and realign the nylon cord. Align the lower assembly with the upper assembly, making sure that the logo is pointing in the same direction as the saddle head. Slide the post together all the way to the saddle head. This should be an easy motion. Make sure not to force this if there's resistance, as again, that's likely the nylon cord that's bunching up. Replace the upper roller pin at the mid cap. Align the threaded hole in the mid cap with the machined indent in the dropper post and reinstall the dust cap screw with a 2.5 mm Allen. After securing the mid cap, verify that the roller pin is still in place behind the cable carrier. The roller pin can easily be bumped out of place while connecting the mid cap to the lower tube. Grab the nylon cable and unwrap it from the cartridge shaft. 
Reinstall the bottom out bumper on the cartridge shaft followed by the lower post assembly. With a 2mm Allen, reinstall the through bolt that was removed earlier, making sure it lines up with the machine grooves in the lower post. Align the metal bar on the lower assembly with the mid cap, allowing the nylon cable to travel straight down the post from the mid cap to the lower assembly. At this point, the nylon cable should not be wrapped around anything. Do not run the nylon cable behind the metal bar on the lower assembly as it acts like another roller pin. Slide the lower assembly into the post body until it is flush with the bottom of the post body. Hold the nylon cable in your hand while doing so and make sure that there's no slack. Thread the nylon cable through the hole in the actuator rod bolt and pull it taut. Use pliers to hold the cable taut while you tighten the lock nut with the 5 16 wrench to hold the cable in place. If your cartridge is overextended, it will push the lower assembly away from the bottom of the tube. To counteract this, push and hold the lower assembly arm against the actuator rod with your index finger, then push the lower assembly into the post with your thumbs. Release the lower assembly arm while still applying pressure with your thumbs. Wrap the loose end of the nylon cable around the bolt and thread the lower cap back onto the dropper post. Use an Allen wrench or screwdriver to test the actuator at the mid cap to see if the nylon cable is properly taut. If it is taut, the cable carrier will move back to its original position at the top of the mid cap. Do not test the dropper post without the lower cap installed, as this can cause your dropper's cartridge to overextend, which can cause the dropper post to sag. Tighten the lower cap with your adjustable wrench. If applicable, use a shock pump to fill the air cartridge to your preferred pressure while the dropper post is extended, making sure not to exceed 300 PSI. That completes your servicing of your PNW dropper. If you need help with installation, please reach out to us at info at pnwcomponents.com or view our manuals page on our website.